The best way to scale your Shopify dropshipping stores to five and six figures is by implementing upsells so you can sell more products and bring in more revenue. And one of the best places you can put these upsells is within the cart itself. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my cart upsell strategy that allows me to scale my Shopify dropshipping stores to five and six figures. So let's get straight into it. So let me show you the exact upsells that we will be implementing in the Shopify cart today. So if I click on add to cart, you can see that a slider cart opens and up the top here, you do have a countdown timer. So I'll be showing you how to implement this. You do also have a progress bar and this progress bar has a threshold in order for the customer to get a reward. So in this instance, if they spend 120 pounds, they get free shipping, but you can also add a discount or a free product. It's totally up to you and you can decide on the threshold amount. Now, if we scroll down, you can see the upsells. So these are upsell products that I'll be showing you how to implement within your cart as well. So if the customer scrolls across, they can go and add these products to their cart as well. And then finally, you can go and add shipping protection like this. So they can toggle this on and off and they can go and add this to their cart as well. And then they can go and add a discount code directly in the cart. They will also see the express checkout buttons and you can also go and add the payments down the bottom. So as you can see, it looks super clean and professional. And this is how I implement upsells within my carts and how I'll be showing you how to do it in today's tutorial. Now the Shopify app that I use to add these upsells to my cart is called Upcart. So I will leave a link in the description to Upcart. And if you scroll down, you can see that it starts at $14.99 per month. But the amount of extra revenue and sales that you are going to bring in basically means that the app more than pays for itself. So from here, we can click on install and then you are going to click on install app. From here, you can choose your plan. So I'm just going to start with the $14.99 per month plan and we're going to click on start seven day free trial. You can then approve the subscription and then you can have a look at the tutorial if you want to. But I'm just going to click on continue. You can then answer this survey and then we can click on customize your slide cart. The first thing that we are going to do is activate Upcart. So we are going to click on open theme settings and then we are going to toggle on Upcart just like this and we will hit save. You can then head back to your Shopify dashboard and then we can go back to apps and we can go back to Upcart. The next thing that you can do is edit the look and feel of your cart. So where it says match your brand design, you can click on open cart editor and under theme settings, you should see inherit fonts from theme. So it's going to choose the same fonts as your theme so that it matches the branding of your store, but you can additionally go and change any of the text colors and button colors if you want to. Once you have done this, we are going to click back and now we can scroll down and you will see add upsells. So we're going to click on add upsells and from here you have two options. So you will see use AI recommended upsells. So basically the app will go and choose recommended upsells based on products that people have been purchasing and things like that. So it's totally up to you if you want to use this or you can configure manual upsells. So if you click on configure manual upsells from here, you can click on add new upsell and then you will have two different options. So firstly, you can choose a specific trigger upsell, which basically means if somebody adds a specific product to their cart, there will be shown another product as the upsell or you can just add all products. So it doesn't matter which product they add to the cart, they will be shown these upsell products. So if I show you a specific trigger, for example, if we go for specific trigger, we can say that if somebody adds this whale bath toy to the cart, then they can be shown another product that is a supplementary product. So we can go and add an upsell product and I'm going to scroll down and we will see this bathroom toy storage. So as you can see, this product is supplementary to the first product. So this is the bath toy. And then if somebody adds this to the cart, they will see this product as the upsell. And this product is slightly cheaper. So it's enticing them to make that extra purchase because they can actually go and store their well bath toy in the bathroom toy storage product. So as you can see, those two work really well together. Alternatively, if we go to add new upsell, you can just go and add all products. And then if you go to add upsell product and you can go and add your upsell product. So we could say this is gonna be one upsell and we can go and choose another product as an upsell. 
we can go and say this one as well. And then you can go and hit save. So as you can see, for all products that are added to the cart, the customer will see this multi-product upsell with the products that I have just chosen. And then if they add this specific product to the cart, they will be shown this COD product as an upsell. So now we can go and hit update. Now, once you are happy with your upsells, you can click on enable, and then you can preview how your upsells are going to look in the cart. So as you can see, this is how the upsell is going to look. So it's looking really good. Now you can, of course, go and change some of the settings. So as you can see here, it says show upsell offer if item already in cart. So basically, if you tick this, for example, if they've got this product already in the cart, if you tick this, it will also show it as an upsell. Now, I personally would untick this because you don't want to be showing customers duplicate products because if they've already got it in the cart, you want to show them some other products to entice them to purchase different products. Then you can see limit the number of upsells in the cart. You can go and choose this and you can go and say a maximum of, let's say five products, for example, you can go and add that or you can just go and leave it and it will go and display the number of items that you have chosen when you configured it manually. However, if you choose AI recommend, uh, recommended upsells, you can go to limit the number and you can say, for example, a maximum of five products in here. So it's totally up to you. Then you can go and change the text. So where it says you will love these, you could go and add something else. Then you've got the position. So you can go and add it to the top or to the bottom. I prefer it at the bottom like this. And then you've got the style. So you've got carousel or you've got block. So you can add it as a block or you can add it as a carousel. I think a carousel looks a little bit cleaner. However, if you do want to display more products because a customer has to go and flick through the carousel to discover your products, if you do want to show them all of your products, you can go and add it as a block. So it's totally up to you. I'm gonna go and change it back to a carousel. Once you are happy with this, you can go and click save. So now that you have your product upsells implemented in your cart, you'll see other things that you can add to the cart. So you can come to announcements and then within your cart, it will say your products are reserved for. So we can go and change this, for example, to let's say 10 minutes. So now it is gonna say, let's just change that because that's 10 seconds. So that's slightly short. We can go and change this to 10 minutes. So now it's gonna say your products are reserved for 10 minutes. So this just adds a bit of scarcity to the product and it prompts the customer to check out quickly so that they go and finalize their purchase. And then you can of course go and change the text. So your products are reserved for time and minutes. You can go and change this text if you want to. You can go and change the positioning so again, you can have it at the bottom or at the top, and then you can go and change the colors as well. So the background color, you can go and change the color of the background, and you can also go and change the border color as well. So you could just have something clean like that, black and white. It's totally up to you. So now we can go and hit save again. Once you have added your announcement, we can come over to rewards. And again, we can go and enable the rewards. Again, you can go and change the colors, and then you will see text after completing full rewards bar. So you can see here, it just says free shipping unlocked. I recommend to just leave it as this. So this will be the reward because you're saying you're $5 away from free shipping. Now you can go for the cart total or you can go for item count. I say cart total is better because that way, if they reach a certain threshold, if they spend a certain amount, they can get free shipping. Whereas this way, this is encouraging them to add more items to their cart. So cart total is better. Now, if we click on show advanced settings and we scroll down, you can see enable, enable geolocation pricing override. So this is basically if you have customers coming from different countries, it will work out the total of their cart based on their currency. So you can go and enable this if you want to, then you will have to configure geolocation pricing. So if we toggle this on, then we can click on configure geolocation pricing, and then you can choose each country and what the pricing threshold will be in order for the customer to get the reward. So for example, I could come in here and say that they need to spend 125 US dollars in order to get the reward. If I add a new geolocation, I can go for Great Britain, for example, and I could say that they need to spend 150 pounds, let's say, for example, and then we can go and click update. You can then decide which reward they're going to receive. So will they receive a discount? Will they receive a free product? So you could say if you spend over a certain amount, you'll get a free product and you can go and select the product that they will get. So if they spend over $125, we can say that they get one of these free products. So let's just say one of the cheaper products, we can go and hit save. So this way you're incentivizing them to spend a little bit more so they get a free product. 
Uh, alternatively, you can go and change this. You can say if they spend $125, then they can go and get a discount reward. So you'd want to go and change the text for that. So instead of saying you're this much away from free shipping, you could say you're this much away from getting a 10% discount or spend X amount and you will get this much discount. Or alternatively, you can just go and offer them free shipping. So it's totally up to you. You can then go and click on add new rewards tier. So you basically get multiple tiers. So if they spend $125, they get the first reward. Then we can say for the second tier, if they spend $140, they get this reward. And then you can add a third reward tier so for this one, if they spend $170, they will go and get this reward. So it's totally up to you. I would say when you first start using the app, just start with one reward tier and then you can test things out and use a little bit of trial and error as you go. So once you are happy with your reward tiers, you can scroll back up and click on save. Once you have saved that, we can now come over to the add-ons module. Now an add-on is another really great tactic that will allow you to bring in more revenue. So from here, we can click on enable and then we can go and choose which add-on we want to add. So we can go for shipping protection. So then we can click on add shipping protection. So now if we scroll all the way down, we can see that the title is shipping protection. And then you can see protect your order from damage, loss or theft during shipping. And they can go and add a little bit of extra to their cost. And they can go and add a little bit of extra to the cost of their shipping in order to add that shipping protection. Now you can go and click on offer is accepted by default. I don't recommend to turn that on because there are some data protection laws in Europe, especially and the UK, which don't allow this. So I recommend to just leave this off and then you can go and simply hit save. Once you have saved that, you will see the shipping protection module has been added to your cart. So a customer can simply toggle this on or off. Alternatively, you can add a product add-on as your add-on. So if we go and choose product add-on, and now we can click on select product, and I am just going to choose this simple product here. So let's just choose this and we can click on save. And again, we can click on save, and now the product will be shown in the cart as a product add-on. Now I'm actually just gonna change this back to shipping protection, and we can simply hit save. There are a few other modules that I do want to show you. So we can come over to additional notes. Again, we can enable this. And now a customer can add additional notes to the cart before they proceed to the checkout. Of course, you can go and change the text for any of these. Now this is just if you do have some personalized items and things like that, you can always go and add this as a module. Right now, I don't think this is essential, so I'm just going to disable this. And now we can go over to the discount codes module. Now, if we enable the discount codes module, this basically just allows customers to go and add a discount code directly in the cart before they go to the checkout. So this is a really great way for customers to be able to see how much is actually going to cost them before they even go to the checkout. So again, this is just a good tactic to speed up the process of getting the customer to head to the checkout, because if they can see that the cost of their cart is going to be cheaper, then they're more likely to head to the checkout. And once they get to the checkout, they're more likely to complete the purchase. So I recommend to keep this on. So we are going to come up and hit save. And now we can come over to subscription upgrades. And from here, we can enable this. And basically, this allows customers to subscribe to a product for a discount. So if you have a product that you want to sell on a subscription, or if you are selling a product on subscription, then you can go and add that directly to your cart. Again, it's just a really handy module to have. Now I'm just gonna go and disable this for now again. And now we're gonna come down to the trust badges. We will go and enable the trust badges, and then we can select the images that we want to use for the trust badges. So you can upload your own image, or you can use the preset images, which are going to be these ones. These are the preset images directly from Shopify and you will see them down at the bottom here. You can go and add them to the top if you want to. I personally think they look better at the bottom. So now we can go and hit save on this. And now we can come down to express payments. Again, we can enable express payments and then you can choose which express payment gateways you want to enable. And basically this just allows customers to purchase directly from the cart. So this again speeds up the process of the customer making that all important purchase. So it's totally up to you which ones you want to add. I'm just gonna go and untick some of these. We can just go for PayPal and ShopPay so that it doesn't look too cluttered. So I think that looks really good. And now we can go and hit save. Now, if you come down to integrations, you can go and integrate the app with Zapier. But if you're a dropshipper, this probably isn't very important to you. And then we can come down to settings. And from here, you can decide on your cart position. So you can decide whether you want it to slide in from the right or the left. 
I think sliding in from the right is what customers are more used to. So I would just leave it as sliding in from the right. You can disable a sticky footer if you want to, it's totally up to you. So as you can see, if you disable the sticky footer, it just goes down to the bottom a bit. I would disable this so that people can see the whole cart. It just looks a little bit less cluttered. And then you can tick open on add to cart. So basically when somebody adds to the cart, this will open straight away. I recommend to have that ticked on. Go to cart instead of checkout. I recommend to have this ticked off. You want to reduce the amount of steps a customer has to take before they make a purchase. So just leave this ticked off and then you will see show savings below product. So it's gonna show below here. If we untick this, then it won't show. So I recommend to have this ticked on. And then you've got show continue shopping button. So you can go and choose this as well. And then it will have a continue shopping button down at the bottom here. Totally up to you. I'm gonna actually untick this. Now, if you come into advanced settings, you will see a few other settings that you can play with. But to be honest with you, all of the other settings that we have used are the most important ones that you are going to want to be looking at. So now we can click save on our cart and we can go back. And now your sticky cart is pretty much ready to go. So you can go and view your online store. And now if we go over to one of our products, so let's just go and click on this product, for example. And now if I click on add to cart, and as you can see, all of those upsell modules that we have added to our cart are now being displayed. Now, one last thing I do want to show you, if we go back to Upcart, we can click on the back button here, and now we can click on View Analytics. And in here, you can see all of the revenue that has been brought in as a result of using the Upcart app. And you can go and use a bit of trial and error to try out different upsells within your cart. And you can see all of the top performing products that have been used as upsells within your cart. So that is how you can start adding upsells to your Shopify dropshipping stores using Upcart. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more dropshipping and e-commerce content. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.